the Unite General Secretary election, um, which uh, we put out a survey on for, for this uh, a couple of days ago. Um, and I was interested to find out what people who are members of Unite who watch this show or are on the mailing list, what they think about this election. Um, we've got uh, two people as well to speak on behalf of the candidates who are standing. Um, and I couldn't, I'm afraid, find uh, anyone to speak on behalf of Gerard Coyne. Um, I thought I had come close to it, but they disappeared. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure why. Uh, I honestly, I did go through quite a number of people. If anyone wants to challenge me on that, I will tell you who they were. Um, so we're going to, firstly, I wanted to show a little graph from the results of the survey, um, which is this one here. There's a question about, um, should the General Secretary of Unite have a strong voice in the direction of the Labour Party? And it says 95% uh, uh, say yes, and 5% say no. So there's definitely uh, a feeling that whoever uh, wins the general secretary uh, votes should play a big role in the Labour Party. Uh, we've got, so we've got, uh, we've got two people to speak on behalf of three candidates, that's Steve Turner, Sharon Graham and Howard Beckett. Um, to start, I thought we could uh, start with Howard Beckett as he's alphabetically first and uh, to speak on Howard Beckett's behalf for a couple of minutes. I'm going to time it. Um, uh, we've got Louise Regan to start. Are you there, Louise? I am. Good morning, Crispin. Good morning. Um, so uh, would you would you tell us why, why you, you'll be backing Howard Beckett for a couple of minutes? Yep, yep. So, I, I mean, as pe some people on the show will know, I've been a trade unionist from the last 30 years active in my union, but I'm also a member of Unite Community and have been for about seven or eight years. But I have worked with Howard in the trade union uh, sort of uh, circle in lots of, uh, lots of times. I've seen him speak and I've seen the work that he does. And I think he's, he's a top class trade unionist. So uh, for me, anybody who's a top class trade unionist will get my vote, but, I also think he speaks out about key issues, which sometimes trade union leaders back off doing. And he never uh, is never fearful about taking something on and challenging injustice. And we have to have people at the top of our trade unions and at the top of our movement who are willing to speak out, to stand on the side of right, to challenge when people are behaving in an unacceptable way and to fight for justice for people. And he does that every single day. And so I think he will be a fantastic leader. And finally, I'll say this, because I don't know how close I'm to my two minutes, but you said that in that poll that 95% or 90% of people, 95% of people said that, they, that, that whoever is elected has to have a strong voice challenging Labour. And Howard has done that. He stood by people that have been suspended. He's spoken out. He's been a force to reckon with around uh, the Labour Party. And I think having him leading Unite, which is, you know, one of the biggest trade unions in this country, um, I think he will really take the fight to the party. And that's really important for me. Great. Um, you did it under two minutes as well. Thank you very much. Good timing. <laughs> and uh, speaking on behalf of Sharon Graham, uh, we've got Paul Kimber. Uh, is a councillor in Dorset. Paul, are you there? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, good morning, uh, Chris, Chris ben, and uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's uh, Paul Kimber. I, I live in a place called uh, Portland in Dorset, where I represent, uh, namely, a, a very working class area. I should be supporting Sharon, and I think Sharon has come over to me head and shoulders above the other uh, candidates. We've got someone that's actually produced a manifesto, and I believe that is pretty well, you can hold that person to account because that person produced a manifesto that is going to reach out. She's going to reach out to quite a lot of our members right, right across the uh, community. And uh, Unite has done quite a lot 
with like with community branches and I'm secretary of a retired members branch and we meet every two months and we've been able to really focus in on what's what's happening in Dorset and the way the Tories are mishandling everything within our community. But Sharon has put down jobs, pensions, and education is an absolute must. She's looking at retired members to say retired members must begin to have a voice. And um, I, we had a dispute where retired members actually backed the local bus bus drivers who came out on strike about uh, 18 months ago. You might have heard of it. We even had Billy Bragg down there singing outside the uh, bus station. And it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. But we've got to begin to reach out. I believe Sharon can do that. Now, the last thing is, Sharon reminds me very much, uh, when I joined, Jack Jones was the General Secretary, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful guy. And um, you could actually, I'll, I'll never forget in my time there, you could actually phone Jack up, those were the days. And I want to see us get back to those days where our General Secretary really did represent the people at large. Okay. And uh, right. thank, well, you. Uh, thank you very much, Crispin. All right. thank, thank you, thank you, Paul. Um, now, uh, speaking on behalf of Steve Turner, we have uh, Laura Daly. Uh, she told me she had maybe had some childcare issues. Has she managed to resolve them? Laura, are you there? I'm here. You might hear them in the background, wouldn't you? But I've asked them not to come in, but they might turn up. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you've um, got two, two minutes to uh, speak on in, in, on behalf of uh, of Steve Turner. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, I did struggle with this decision. It is a really big decision, and I think Howard, you know, can um, can rabble rouse with the best of them. He's incredible. I've seen him on this show so many times, um, and so for me, it was between him and Steve. And to be perfectly honest, if Howard won, I'd be more than happy to support him um the reason i'll personally be back in steve and it is a personal choice is is just i really strongly believe in grassroots activism and i i love the fact that steve's worked and at every level throughout the union or he started as a lay officer um so he's, he's kind of ticked all the boxes he understands every level of work in there um so i really like that about him i know there's some question about um whether he would question kia starmer and all of that I've seen him speak in the Unite community meetings um, and, and you know, he makes no bones about the fact that he's really disappointed with Kia Starmer. I think he does have the same opinion on Kia as Howard, just their approaches will be a little bit different. He wants to hold him to account, not massively publicly, because, you know, um, we saw what happened when the right of the party did that to Jeremy and it's absolutely killed us. And we don't want to be hypocrites and do the same thing, I guess. Um, so and he's offering sort of training and development, easy accessibility to unite members for advice and things like that. So he's really focusing on, on members, which I find hugely important and something that the Labour Party is completely lacking at the moment. You know, they just don't care about members and they've made that perfectly clear. I think we need to start grassroots, start looking at our members, start training them, start getting them to feel a bit more welcome. If we can do that within our trade unions and make that spill out into the Labour Party and make sure that we're all working, you know, on the same page. Um, I, th I think that's going to be the only way we can move forward in, in any of these movements. Um, so, yeah, they're the sort of reasons why why I'll be back and Steve. Um, and he did get the vote overwhelmingly from staff of Unite as well. So that goes some way to show that... Oh, hey. <laughs> that, um, hey, might be up now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think so. But if the staff know him and they voted for him, I think that's a pretty good indication that he's a, a good sort. What good timing. Oh, well, well done. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, now I'm um, moving back to Howard uh, Beckett and we've got Cornish Damo to speak on behalf of Howard Beckett. Have I not changed, unchanged my, no, I haven't changed my name. Uh, well, I forgot, I found you anyway. Well, Dave, Damien, um, if you would prefer. Damien, Damien then, Damien, uh, Damien Wiley. So um, would, would Willie, you... it's Willie. You Willie. gotta say it's two aisles, mate. I've grown up with it. Well, I'm mispronouncing a lot of names, but um, I, I was trying to be polite, but I've seen that's not. Uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, so um, 
would you would you be able to do two minutes on why you're supporting Howard Beckett? Have you never seen me? Two minutes, my goodness, it's out, whether I can get it in with that. Okay, Howard Beckett, where to begin? I've, I've not felt so enthused, so inspired by a candidate on a campaign since Corbyn came out of the blocks in 2015. The simple reason for that is with Howard Beckett, you've got a candidate making manifesto pledges that just make sense. They're fantastic. And that manifesto can be found on beckettforunite.co.uk. Now, as one of Unite's uh, Assistant General Secretaries, Howard has come into this contest from a position of broad experience. His responsibility covers legal and political. Given that he's a lawyer, he, by profession, he represents our union on the Labour Party National Executive, the party built by our movement. So he has significant experience in this brief. And the role of the General Secretary isn't just an industrial one. It is a political one, too. The trade union movement didn't create the Labour Party and take seats on its national executive to not play a part in that. It is right, therefore, that the money unite as a trade union give to the Labour Party, be reviewed periodically to ensure membership dues are not being wasted on a party being led in a direction not in the best interests of the union and its members. And the leadership of Keir Starmer has been difficult for a lot of people to stomach with his lack of opposition, fights with the left of his own party, and a lack of policy so dire nobody knows what he stands for. It is right and proper, therefore, that any potential General Secretary for our union unite, call this out, and remind Labour just what movement they're supposed to be a part of. Now, he has responsibility for industrial sectors such as chemical pharmaceutical process textiles and the service sector one of the largest industrial sectors in the uk he oversees finance at unite he oversees membership services he is a skilled negotiator in industrial disputes both at national and international level as well when the blacklisting scandal broke howard was there seeing things through for those affected to get their compensation he's led from beginning to end on the fire and rehire scandal at BA Cargo. He was there at the height of the scandal. He was there when things were looking bad for them. And he was there to ultimately defeat it by dealing with the CEO personally throughout. And he continues to advocate and agitate against fire and rehire wherever it appears. He leads on this issue within Unite. And he's led on one actions in other high profile cases too. There's the Birmingham Biz disputes that we all remember. There was Ineas Grangemouth, Vistian, Stobart's Lancaster. It was Howard Beckett there every time. He doesn't let things go either. You know, he, he, all, the victimization of mesothelioma sufferers was progressed all the way to the Supreme Court by Howard in order to ensure their rights were upheld. When the Birmingham Centre needed to be to completed, it was Howard Beckett who was intervening to get it done. It was Howard Beckett who led the whole union movement in opposing moves to ban picketing during the pandemic to ensure it could continue safely, of course, so that we could continue to stand up for our members, so they can continue to dispute actions imposed by their employers. It was Howard Beckett fighting cuts to holiday pay, establishing a precedent and winning compensation for those affected. He's a strong voice for Unite on Labour's NEC. Brooks, no nonsense from the Labour Party. He's got no fear of challenging the Labour leader publicly where others don't and i'll come back to that fire and rehire issue once more it is howard lobbying government to deal with this issue to stop the exploitation of employees being forced onto poor paying conditions and that is something the government could fix with the stroke of a pen but it's howard beckett that's fighting on that and i'll leave it there thank you wow take a breath take a breath off nope. that. <laughs> i've got massive lungs mate <laughs> well th thank you uh thank you damien um now, uh, our next speaker is on behalf of um, Sharon Graham, and I'm going to introduce uh, Mary Callaghan, who is a um, uh, Northwest Territorial Rep on the Exec and Vice Chair of the Northwest Regional Committee. Uh, and uh, I am just going to um, mute there. Me Mary, are you there? I am. Thank you very much, Crispy. Can you hear me okay? I can, yeah. Yes, and um, very grateful for this opportunity and obviously to be following what's just been said. And may I say, a lot of it is exactly the same as what Sharon Graham is doing. Um, Sharon has a practical plan, an amazing manifesto, all of which is going to protect jobs, improve jobs, and improve them for the future, our futures of our younger generations as well. And this is what we need to remember, protecting wages. And this then will build the power back in the workplace, back to grassroots membership. This is what we need. This is what we've all been crying out for. And then it will drive the politics back into the workplace. It will help us to politicize our workforces. That is what they need. Sharon has 
the manifesto back to the workplace, jobs, pay and conditions. As the General Secretary, Sharon will ensure that she will visit at least one workplace every week. When have we ever seen that? We've never seen that. Equalities, equalities is at the heart of the, our union. It always has been. She will make sure that the equalities issues and the industrial issues become a core part of the unite bargaining agenda. Politic politicizing, she will introduce a workers manifesto and she will make sure she hold policy meetings at unite workplaces all over our union. Sharon will do the politics from the bottom up, not the top down. Sharon is the voice. Sharon is the future. And Sharon is what our working class, our workers need. And I am 100% behind Sharon. And so are a lot of our big industrial branches. And it's showing in this election so far. And thank you very much, Crispin. Thank you, Mary. Um... There's, I, I'm, I couldn't get some of the, 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 the speeches here are amazing at this time of the morning on a Sunday. I'm, I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, and um, finally, speaking on behalf of Steve Turner, uh, we have Peter Bond, who is a Unite representative for Black Cab Drivers in London. Are you there, Peter? Oh, uh, yeah. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. Uh, yeah. Hello, Crispin, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'll get straight to it. I'm supporting Steve Turner. We want someone who's steeped in industrial chain unionism, especially at Unite, formerly the TNG. Steve covers all of the above. He may have only done 39 years compared to my own 41 years, but 39 years is enough. First and foremost, we need a general secretary with industrial background. Working with the Labour Party is important, but is in a secondary role of secondary importance. Don't think Steve is a Keir Starmer supporter at all, because he says quite rightly that General Secretary needs to work with the elected leader, whoever that is. It's our party, we created it. Steve was an enthusiastic supporter of JC in his first campaign to be leader. I witnessed that myself on the night with Jeremy Corbyn and Steve Turner after a few drinks. Unlike many who jumped on the bandwagon of JC's success when they were nowhere to be seen or heard from in JC's first campaign to be leader, Steve played a huge part in writing Rebecca Long Bailey's Green New Deal with an industrial strategy and will launch his, launch his own one soon. Steve has an industrial history steeped in negotiating skills from his days as a shop steward to deputy, deputy general secretary with recent successes, huge successes at Rolls-Royce and the furlough and cease self-employed schemes negotiated alongside Francis O'Grady at the TUC. Wow. If anyone was at Unite's Left, United, United left Hustings, they would have witnessed a consummate performance by Steve Turner. He duly won it. The fragmentation of the left in our movement would have been damaged far less if, as agreed before the Hustings, that only the winner, Steve, would be the left candidate for General Secretary. Please, please vote for Steve Turner. Thank you. Right. OK. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you, Peter. Now, I didn't... I don't... I didn't... I was hoping that nobody would attack uh, other candidates because I kind of wanted it to be uh, just about speaking in, in positive ways about each candidate. So um, uh, can we can we keep that in mind when we're in the chat as well? Uh, it's it's to me, elections shouldn't be about saying how someone isn't another, another candidate isn't good enough. And this and my candidates, you know, it, it's got to be speaking in support about the issues and and the and the positive side of a, of a candidate not the other way around so um i just wanted to um bring in uh somebody who took the survey who was undecided um when they answered the survey and i want to find out if they've made any decision on the back of what they've heard kendrick are you there yes um now uh this is this is uh this is, it would be interesting to find out. Have you have you have you made any? Has it changed your mind what you've heard from anyone here? Uh, not at the moment. Some good speeches, uh, good points made by all the speakers, but uh, so I haven't really changed my mind. I think the thing to me is that uh, Knight as an organisation needs to really 
change a lot of its structures and a lot of its, uh, how it sort of functions. Um, so one of the issues is I'm the chair of the community branch in uh, the Fylde area and in Lancashire, the, it often feels like community members are sort of second class citizens. I think there are some sort of uh, candidates who are willing to address that, but I think that is something that really needs addressing. Having that, um, so you haven't heard any yeah. anything from any any of the speakers there to to make you think that has that's been addressed yet? Um, not really, no. Okay. I think, I think right. there were some good points made, but uh, yeah. there's still that sort of sense that um, the candidates don't really want to sort of. Um, I think a few have said things that. Um, implied that it might sort of change the structures and make it more inclusive of the community members. So, um, but I'm still undecided, really. Okay. Um, All right, well... Uh, well I, I've branched in support. So I've, uh, I chaired the branch meeting on Friday and they uh, supported Howard Beckett. But I'm not sure myself yet who to support. Okay. Well, look, thank you for that. Uh, well, there's more work to be done for the, the candidates to win over Kendrick. Uh, and as the... I, I'm now going to um, show the result of the survey that we put out, um, which was which was answered by um, 535 Unite members, uh, and this is the uh, this is the result of the, the survey for who they would support. Which candidate are you backing for general secretary? Howard Beckett. Uh, received 70%, Sherwood Coyne 2%, Sharon Graham 5%, Steve Turner 12% and 11% unsure. Obviously this is not um, a properly researched poll in, in finding people from all over the country but it is a snapshot of, um, of Unite members. They are all over the country. Um, most of them would be Labour Labour activists as well so that's interesting. Um, so, you know, it's all to play for, but it looks like at the moment Howard Beckett has has a larger percentage than the other candidates in my in my mind.